Welcome back to Barn Built Beaters. In this episode, let me tell you a short story about fabricating my first compound turbo system. How it went from this to this. Version one, well, that can go directly into the trash. Let's get through the bad first and finish with the good. The process started off great. I had a display of parts on my bench, all excited to show you. An S475 and S363 manifold turbo, a stage three Hamilton head, flanges to eliminate silicone boots for the intake and exhaust piping, some bungs to weld on for various sensors, and lastly, 3D printed parts I designed and printed to aid in fabrication. I got my head, manifold, and turbo mocked up using grade five hardware while I waited on my titanium studs to show up. I used blue painter's tape to visualize my thoughts on piping for you, which, well, didn't work out as well as I had hoped. I cut off the beaded silicone flange on the S363 and welded the V-band flange onto the compressor housing, which didn't turn out great either. But to be fair, I don't have much aluminum practice, although my previous experiences with aluminum turned out much, much better. I was ready to start making pie cuts. This is exactly where the project took a turn for the worse. I got the exhaust into the bandsaw, ready to cut each slice. However, my bandsaw blade barely touched the stainless and eventually the blade broke on me. I eventually cut all 18 pieces for each of the four 90 degree bends. I cleaned them up with a carbide bit and used the belt sander to sand them flat where I was then ready to tack them together. As soon as I started, I found each piece was a little bit different size, possibly the saw squishing them as I cut through. This resulted in large gaps, poor fitment, and difficulty tacking, but I progressed welding the flanges to the first 90 degree and fully welding each seam up. It turned out not that great. Overheated, not shiny, not gold, blue, or purple that stainless is known for. However, my turbos were connected and in their place. I then moved on to the exhaust side with multiple bends. This was roughly a repeat of before. Once I tacked it all together, it looked pretty slick. I was super excited to weld it up, but as I started to weld, it warped on me, luckily still fitting. I adjusted my welding to warp it back the other way, which surprisingly worked. I continued on, and again, it warped this time, resulting in the pipe not being able to be connected or reused. This is where I purchased all new pieces to make version two. Honestly, I was a bit happy to redo it. I wasn't happy with how it was turning out, but not disappointed enough to scrap it either. This time, I purchased pre-cut pie cuts, polished tubing, and replaced the flanges that I couldn't salvage. Once my pieces came in, I started by tacking each piece together to make the 90 degree bend. Once I had enough tacks, I fully welded each joint, making sure to back purge. For those that aren't familiar with back purging, this is where you fill the inside of your material being welded with argon. Argon is coming out of the tick torch, protecting the front of the weld, while the inside is being protected due to the argon inside, resulting in a stronger weld due to the lack of oxidation. While you watch me weld up these 90 degree joints, here are some tips I found while I was waiting on my new parts to show up. Don't fabricate in one shot. Do a few pieces at a time so you can adjust for warpage and misfitment. Use the proper size filler. I used 035 wire which melted much better than the 1 16th inch I used earlier, resulting in the filler sticking to the base metal. Use pulse settings if your machine has it. This is to reduce overall heat input. I started at 2 Hz, ramped up to 4 Hz, and finished at 200 Hz. Let your part cool down between welds. Again, this is to reduce overall heat input, to reduce warpage, and help you achieve those awesome colors stainless is known for. Add a tack every one inch. This is to reduce warpage when welding. It also gives you a signal to stop welding at each tack and let the part cool down. Lastly, make sure you have appropriate gas coverage. This protects your welds and should help achieve beautiful colored welds as well. I was using pre and post flow along with a number 16 cup.
After my 90 degree bends were completed, I started to tackle the exhaust side. I tacked on each of the flanges to each end, and once I was confident, I fully welded each flange. Welding the flanges was probably one of my favorite tasks. In my experience, the larger the weld, the easier it is to make it look pretty. And boy, did these turn out awesome. Very consistent, color rich, and just nice to look at. I then kept thinking which way to progress. Do I weld the straight section on and then work the 180 degree bend or the other way around? I decided the straight section was best to ensure I could keep this section and the cold piping parallel with each other for aesthetics. Afterwards, I welded a 90 degree to the straight section, lining it up with the other 90 degree connected to the manifold turbo. I was shy about half an inch and had to make up a small sliver to make up the difference. Each time I added pieces and welded them in, I ran back and forth to check the fitment and adjust as necessary. This was pretty monotonous, but definitely necessary to achieve proper fitment and great results. While I did my best welding to keep the beads running in the same direction, I did eventually mess up on one flange and that small sliver. Oh well, it'll still be functional and not too noticeable. Part of the challenge of fabricating this piping was just figuring out how to hold it in position. I'm a firm believer of not buying one-time use tools. I found a ratchet and clamp to work well to hold the pipe in the position I needed. The rubber feet protected the polished stainless while I was also able to clamp it in different orientations. I was also cautious here when laying the pipe down on the steel fixture table to not scratch it. I purposely used paper towels as a protective layer and as needed, aluminum foil to maintain electrical continuity. After the part was fully welded and cooled down, I went back and welded the insides of each flan to add reliability. Is it needed? Who knows, but I've seen others do it and it helps a bit with flow as there's no longer a hard edge. However, this was extremely difficult as I kept dipping the tungsten and my beads didn't look fantastic, but overall not terrible for the challenge. I then moved to the small cold charge pipe. I cut off one flange as the new one would have cost over $60, the other only 20. The only challenging portion to this piece was getting it to fit in its place. I kept the best looking 90 degree bend as this was front and center and matched up the beads to run the same direction as the pipe beneath. I slowly finessed the fitment on the sander until it snapped into place ready to be fully welded.
Once the piping was finished, it was time to support the large turbo as it weighs around 50 pounds. I designed a bracket to bolt to the AC compressor location where I would attach a pipe to. My original idea was to fill a pipe up with sand, heat it up, and bend it to shape. For some reason, I bought thick walled tube and it was nearly impossible to bend. I ended up doing a pie cut method similar to my piping. I rooted it to where I wanted, welded it up, and blended it out to make it appear bent. If you look closely, you can probably tell what I did, but most will probably be staring at the turbos instead. To complete this project, we need to finish painting the turbos. I decided to use an air-cured Cerakote as it's rated for 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, which should be well within the operating temps of the exhaust. Since it's winter outside, I decided to purchase a pop-up spray tent so it minimized any overspray. Even though I've camped previously, I struggled setting this up. It turned out to be extremely easy, but the instructions weren't great, and I was overlooking some key connections. Shortly after I got it set up, I got a paint rack installed to hang my items, and I painted them. I purposely didn't film this so I didn't get any overspray on my camera lens, but here's a few shots of the items hanging after being painted. It turns out I'm a much better fabricator than I am a painter. My mask is all scratched up and I can't wear my glasses, so I wasn't able to see well, which didn't help with total coverage. I ended up with a few runs, but nothing that can't be touched up though. Despite needing touch-ups, I installed them back onto the engine to see what it all looks like. I also want to get this video out to you all as I will touch it up off camera. This channel is to share my work with all of you. I love sharing my project and, like most, I like the gratification it brings when people say good things about it. But mostly, I want to inspire others to try things outside of their comfort zone. If I told my younger self I would be doing these things, I'd never believe it. I've built up so much confidence, improved my welding, and am able to design and fabricate parts from scratch from years of practice. Most people have a fear of failure and never tried things outside their comfort zone, therefore, they won't improve. The only way to improve is to practice. The best time to start was yesterday, the second best is today. What are you going to challenge yourself with today to improve for tomorrow? I hope you enjoyed my short story, my failure, and my success in this video. It's important to remember, don't give up the first time as your next go around may be wonders better. I'll catch you in the next video.